Hello, my friend. Welcome to another adventure. Right now, I'm in the mountains of France, the French Alps. There's not a whole lot of peak destinations here except for ski resorts, and it's spring, so it's kind of off season. Instead, there's just beautiful views everywhere you look. So today, I'm taking you further into the mountains to find this beautiful waterfall. Are you ready? Let's go. I've witnessed some absolutely extraordinary views on this trip. Some grand enough to make you stop and question what truly is the meaning of life. Today, let's check out this amazing waterfall. One of the 10 most dangerous airports in the world, skiing in the Alps, and of course eat some good old meat and cheese. Well, I highly recommend doing this during spring or summer because I'm walking through a ski resort right now. <laughs> No, don't mind me. Just a kook hiking up the mountain in boots during the wrong time of the year. I'm trying to find this waterfall and all of the trail map apps that I usually use in the United States don't work as well in France. If you have any good suggestions for international trail apps, please let me know because this waterfall is supposed to be somewhere in the middle of this mountain. I'm just going to trek up this trail right here and hope I end up close to it. This place is like a melting pot of fairy tales with sleepy little villages, mossy forests, and steep, rugged, snow-peaked mountains. Just more inspiration for my Patreon bedtime stories. Absolutely pristine. Well, from what I gather, I'm essentially walking to the top of a ski run that has been closed and is melting off. I'm almost to the waterfall though. I think I can hear it. Let's keep going. I found the waterfall. Check it out. Let's get a little bit closer. Standing at approximately 60 meters or 200 feet tall, hidden behind giant spruce trees and in between the folds of a cliffside in the countryside of France, you'll see the spray from the falls cascading down the mountainside in a cavernous descent. Cascade de la Flèche. people boulder here as well. So they climb straight up the side of this mountain, inside the waterfall, and right above me. It starts here and goes all the way up the side of this, along the scathing of the mountain, and then you go all the way across on these lines, and then it continues further up the top. You just clip in. That is crazy. As thrilling and exciting as it looks, I'd like to keep my feet planted on solid ground and go on to explore more beautiful waterfalls. So I'm out. Well, that was amazing. What a beautiful waterfall. It's time to head back to the van. Did I mention one of my favorite things about France has been the plethora of birds. They sing all hours of the day, it seems songs about how beautiful and happy they are. I'm pretty far up into the mountains and what's great is there's lots of little camping spots along the road. I found one with a fire pit, there's a little river down here. Come check it out. I'm gonna make something tasty inside the van. There's a little fire pit right here. Don't know if they have poison ivy or poison oak in France, but I'm not trying to find out. And then all the way down there is a river. So, what do we got in here? We got take one of these, this, and a fork. A few days ago, I got the opportunity to have raclette, 
in this old little French town. It was in the cellar. It was like a cheese cave. It was a little fancy. So I decided, and I'm inspired, to make raclette van life style. I don't have the proper equipment, but that's okay. I have this amazing woodsy view behind me. So I decided we'll just make the best of it. I got some raclette cheese. I got some smoked meats because I have found that the French survive off smoked meats and cheese. If you've ever had raclette, you should let me know down below because it was delicious. Maybe we'll do a reincarnation Hannah style when I get back to the States. I stopped by the little local market to get my supplies. There's no supermarkets or grocery stores in these little French towns. There are all these little tiny markets with fresh ingredients. This is a truffle raclette. It's very smelly but very tasty. Some smoked pork and prosciutto and some fresh baked bread. And so instead of using that little fancy coal burning heater they had at the raclette place, I'm just going to use the gas burners. There we go. Just toasting my bread. Now, this is going to be the challenge. Once I melt the cheese enough, I'm just gonna smear it on the bread. It's thick cheese. Okay. Think I'm about done on the cheese. I'm just gonna add some smoked meat. And then it's time to take a bite. quick and easy and delicious. I forgot how good homemade bread is. If I eat any more bread though, I might turn into a loaf myself. <laughs> there are worse things, right? <laughs> mm. So good. Driving through some of the villages and heading back up to the mountains to get some snowboarding in up at 9,000 feet. Up here at the top of the mountain, the helicopter just flew in. It's a bluebird day out and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at these views. Welcome to Les Trois Vallées, the largest connected ski area in the world. Linked by 183 ski lifts and 600 kilometers of skiable terrain. The French are constantly investing in their lift systems so they can transport up to 260,000 skiers per hour. This area also has one of the 10 most dangerous airports in the world, with the shortest runway. Yeah, yikes is an understatement. Check that out, I found my next sport. Paragliding is really popular here as well. They were everywhere, skiing off cliffs and skiing out of it once they hit the ground. So wild. Good luck finding a ski resort in the United States that lets you do this. Stormy up here on the top. Weather changes in an instant. So dramatic, but so beautiful at the same time. It's spring, so right now, you may be skiing in snow at the top of the mountain, but dancing in the rain at the bottom. See you next week for the last week of Europe's adventures in an abandoned castle.